Hey guys. Well, we're gonna give this a shot. I hope everybody's family's well, I hope you're well, and uh, we're all just hoping to get through this, right? Well, for what it's worth, I miss having you guys in class. You know, we cover so much more in class. I'm gonna do the best I can here to walk us through this, okay? Got my coffee, look natural, right? Don't have my blue shirt on, but oh well. First thing we're gonna talk about, tools. Okay, tools are very important. Uh, most of you guys have gotten your benders. I have, believe it or not, out of all the conduit I've ever ran, I've never used a Milwaukee bender, although I'm pretty impressed with it. We got a good deal on it. We got it for like half price. Uh, I see two bolts here in the handle. And if, you, if you're not used to using a bender, that, that may not mean much. The other benders come with a shoe and you just cut off a piece of RMC conduit and thread it in there and make the handle as long as you need it, okay? The problem with that is they're always unscrewing. You're always putting tight, tight, and tight, and tight. And this here has the two bolts in it. It's gonna keep it from doing that. So I like that. This is the radius of the bender, okay? This is what bends our pipe. The National Electrical Code sets a limit on how tight the 90 degree or the bend can be. We, you know, they use pipe benders in muffler shops to bend the muffler pipe all around to get it underneath your car where it's gotta go. You could not use a muffler bender, pipe bender, for conduit because the radius would be too tight. And they also squeeze the conduit when they make the bends. So in conduit, we always have to protect the ID or the inner diameter of the conduit because that's where our wire goes. And if you remember, the maximum fill we can have for any piece of conduit over 24 inches long is 40%. So we have to constantly protect the ID of that conduit. And I'll talk more about that later. This bender here has a heavier hook than the ones we have at school. I like that. They also have the numbers. They've highlighted them in black. I like that. So uh, over here we have um, we have multiplier numbers. Over here we have degree numbers. This is the radius. This is the hook. This is the handle. You put your foot here, and I'll talk more about bending as we go through it. But right now. What we're going to talk about are the tools and right now i really like the bender for whatever that's worth i hope you do too also on the handle here it has some really good reference uh, charts for making our bins we're going to make several different kinds of bins the first bin we're going to do is a box offset and that requires two 10 degree angle bins and we'll get to that to our next video. But we use normally, we use 10 degree, 15 degree, 30 and 45, and a 90. And that takes care of, boy, the lion's share of all our conduit bending. But I like that chart. I like the size of the handle. I like how smooth it is, believe it or not. It took me forever to figure out. And I finally asked a mechanic, why do some mechanics buy these snap-on wrenches when they're so expensive? And he said, you notice how smooth they are? I said, yeah, they're really smooth, they're polished. He said, if you use your wrenches all day long, every day, the difference between a Craftsman wrench and a Snap-on wrench is huge with your hands. Same thing with Bender, you know? I mean, the, the easier our tools are to use, the more we got left at the end of the day to do whatever we want, bass, fish, hunt, golf, whatever, right? So I like the handle there. Enough about the Bender. We also got a 25 foot rule. And 25 foot rule, it's really a nice rule. They gave that to us. It's magnetic, so you can stick it over here. And it sticks onto anything metal, like a pipe or a metal wall. You have metal walls, ground plants. Uh, you also have a little hole here. And when you pull it out, you can put your finger there and stop it. I like that, I've never seen one with that before. So you can let it come back wherever you want it. And you have a lock, 
where you can lock it out. So, and you have a place to put it on your pocket. I like it, I like it. So, very appreciative of Milwaukee, very appreciative of Rexel. They did a great job. Now, a little about Hacksaw and Hacksaw blades. Hacksaw blades come in teeth per inch. And this is a Klein Hacksaw blade. I'm gonna get it up here where you can see it a little closer. I'll try to get a picture. This says 32T by 12 inches. That means it's 12 inches long. But the 32T means 32 teeth per inch. So if you get it up here and see 32 teeth per inch, that's a lot more teeth per inch than a normal hacksaw blade like you get from Harbor Freight or somewhere. And this is the kind you want to cut EMT with. It's a lot easier, it won't hang up as much, and it does a great job. So, also, it's a big argument, you know, with certain people on how a hacksaw blade goes. Some people say it cuts when you draw. That's not right, okay? So take it from me. Hacksaw blades go in and they cut when you push. They cut when you push, okay? So, I don't care what anybody else says about cutting when you draw, no, it cuts when you push. So the teeth slope forward. They slope forward toward the front of the hacksaw, okay? 32 teeth per inch, gonna make it easy cutting the EMT, okay? Now, got a, got a, a level, and I upgraded a little bit this time. I love the green lead levels because they used to just be this wide, okay? It's just be that wide, but now they've got a stinking laser on them. They've got a laser level, okay? I don't know if you can see that, okay? But now you can put it on a piece of metal, okay? Okay, turn your laser on, and if you get it level, it's gonna shoot a light out through there so you can run conduit. I think it's great, I think it's great, I think it's great. Okay. Now, this here has a zero degree, a 90 degree, a 30 degree, a 30 and a 45. 30, 45, zero, 90. These are great levels, they really are. Now, Southwire makes them, Klein makes them, several of them make them, but you want one if you can you know, afford it now, fine. If you can't, whenever you get out there in the industry, you want one that's got a 30 and a 45 and a zero and a 90 on it. And magnets, magnets are so important, okay? Now, the next thing on tools is a reamer, okay? And we're gonna talk about reaming. This here is a great little tool, okay? Some of y'all may have it. Uh, it has a reaming function for half inch, three quarter, and one inch EMT. It'll only ream EMT. It's got a screwdriver on the end, it's got a little cup on it. And that cup, I run a lot of con conduit in my time, and uh, a lot of long days, you know, eight, 10, 12 hour days. Well, if you're sweating, if you're 40 feet up in a lift, you're running conduit, I don't know about you, but I get shaky after six or eight hours. And for screw type connectors, okay, I'll talk about these in a minute, but for these here, screw type set screw connectors, that little cup goes on there, okay, and it guides your hand, okay, guides your hand, where it doesn't slip off. If you take a regular flat blade screwdriver, toward the end of the day, you're fighting that thing. So, I like the cup, I like the reamer, it's Klein, it's great. Okay, that brings us up to, like the tools over there, that brings us up to our material. We should have a set screw connector, we should have a compression connector, we should have a compression coupling. They're not couplers. Don't go in Rexel asking for couplers. That's hydraulic stuff. They'll, they'll snicker at you when they go in the back room. These are couplings, C-O-U-P-L-I-N-G-S. And you should have a set screw coupling. 
And on top of that, you got a four square box and they're combination knockouts. The combination knockouts means you got half inch and three quarter inch. If you notice on this here, the knockout comes out for the half inch and then this for the knockout for three quarters is not circular. It's what they call eccentric, E-C-C-E-N-T-R-I-C. -E that means it looks like a crescent moon. So we have concentric, C-O-N-C-E-N-T-R-I-C, -E knockouts like this here, and then eccentric knockouts here. In certain cases, we are not allowed to use eccentric knockouts for bonding. We have to we have to make different considerations for that. Just know you have to do that. It's four inches by four inches. You're gonna see these boxes in a lot of places. And we should have 50 feet of conduit. Now the conduit comes in 10 foot sections. And in the next video, I'm gonna get us started on how to cut conduit, the basic box bend, and how to check it and ream it. So send me any questions. Please, please, please keep the questions coming. I know this is second rate at best, but we're going to do the best we can. Get you out there and get the job you want. So take care. See you soon.